It's been a while, but we're back. We're in the kitchen. We're cooking. We're ready to dish and all things horse racing, but especially this week, as I'm joined now by the Paddock Prince himself, David Levitch, especially this week, the Traverse Stakes, uh, I thought one of the best races we've seen so far this year, uh, maybe only second behind the Kentucky Derby, but David, that was quite a show. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. I think it probably was the second best race of the year. It was good, too, because the good horses lived up to their billings. They all showed up. And even at other races on the Travers card, the Jerkins, like all those races, they just seem to like it's rare when all the races that are supposed to be good actually live up to their <laughs> billing. And the Travers, yeah, it was an exceptional race. I actually I thought Fierceness was going to win by about five links turning for home. And then with about 100 yards ago, I thought he was going to get caught. It was it was it was a really exciting race. I think everybody got good trips. Sierra Leone did his thing at eight to five and ran third, <laughs> second. But no, I thought overall it was a really good race. Yeah. And the, the Philly, of course, uh, getting a lot of attention with her runner up effort. Uh, I, I think you and I are somewhat simpatico on this. I, I certainly hate to take anything away from her because she ran great. But. She was second best. Like there is no universe where she is winning that race. And certainly as a Philly doing that, beating all the other males in the race, that's great. But to me, assuming fierceness can keep it together for one more start, he is unquestionably the best three-year-old male. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think Doorknock, I didn't really know what to do with Doorknock going into the race because when he won the Belmont, he beat a horse that's talented, but he had mind frame had only run two times and he was very green. And then he came back in the Haskell and mind frame was green again, all over the place. So I didn't really know what to do with him. So I would, after this race and fierceness beating door knock pretty easily, I would say that fierceness is at the top, but I don't really understand why people think, um, torpedo Anna had a, not as good a trip. Torpedo Anna could not have had a better trip. She sat on the rail and angled out. And fierceness was three wide the whole way. He was in the clear, which he needs to be. But I thought they both had perfect trips. Yeah, I wouldn't they, say fierceness had a dead perfect trip because he was wide. But I mean, Torpedo Anna had a perfect trip. No, they they both got to run the race, which is what you want to see. And uh, he was better that day. And, and based on what we've seen in his career, obviously there have been some hiccups, some races where uh, the connections would probably like to have back. But he gets a long time now. I don't know that there's anyone in the three-year-old class absent people talking about city of Troy coming over. I, I don't know that anyone here can run with him if he's at his best and forever young too is going to come back. Uh, do you think he'll be the classic favorite? Um, I honestly, I, I don't know if he's going to be the favorite. I think it depends what Arthur's ride does this weekend in the jockey gold cup. Cause if he yeah, like runs point. another like freaky race, but I don't know if he has the buzz that Fierceness has, but if Arthur's right, right. runs another freaky race in the Gold Cup. What, what do you make of the international horses? I mean, City of Troy getting a lot of buzz. Forever Young, certainly, if he returns. Uh, I think they're talking about the other horse from the Derby from Japan. Was it T.O.? He actually ran name. pretty good in the Derby. T.O. Password. Thank you. He actually ran pretty good in the Derby. Yeah, no, I, I thought he was the by far the least likely uh, winner, and not that he ever was threatening to win, but certainly, uh, I mean, I would have lost every bet I made head to head on him. So, yeah, he did better than I was expecting. Forever young, of course, I love, but I'm a little nervous him coming back. I mean, he's a no name, so I, I kind of feel like he and City of Troy have the opportunity to both be over bet. Well, I would take Forever Young over City of Troy first off because the whole dirt. Has City of Troy even ran on the dirt yet? No. He is by Justin. Yeah, and I saw his owner did an interview about his bookmaking odds in the Classic, and his own owner said the odds were ridiculous, that his future odds in the Classic were ridiculous. So, yeah. I don't no, know. I would say Forever Young over I him. I love that sure. Aiden O'Brien and Coolmore and all them, they love taking the shot and they want a Classic, and I, I think it's sporting, but. The, their record is pretty tough to like in that race. Yeah. I, has fight. Forever Young run since – when's the last time Forever Young's even ran? Has he not run since the Derby? The Derby, yeah. I yeah, mean, I don't think so. Last year they had uh, – I'm drawing a blank on his name too, the Japanese horse who would run in the Derby, and then he was off. Oh, until yeah, a, Dermasoda, sir, Yes, Dermasoda. thank you, Dermasoda Gake. He had yeah. – uh, run in some whatever race in Japan. So I, I imagine Forever Young and T.O. Password will be similar. Prepping. 
Yeah. But no, I think it's sure. tricky too because Del Mar is not the most. If you've been paying attention to Del Mar this year, it's not the most closer friendly racetrack. I know that for sure. Right. Yeah. I, I was actually a little, I mean, I get it. Like Sierra Leone, even though he hasn't won like the big one since the Bluegrass, I would say has earned his way to the Breeders' Cup. But given his running style, shipping out west to Del Mar, ah, I don't know. I mean, well, you're going to get a price. Well, to circle back to Torpedo Anna, who Ken Mc, trainer Ken McPeak has said is not going to go to the Classic, the Distaff would be her target. If she were to just overwhelm the competition in the Cotillion, do you think they'd change course and try the Classic? I don't think they should. I don't think he will. I think he said, didn't he say if he wins the uh, Cotillion and the Distaff that he thinks she could be a Horse of the Year candidate? So I feel like that's kind of engraved in his mind. That's a little brave. Yeah, I'd have a real hard time with that. I mean, you you got to win the the races. You step out of your division if you're going to be horse of the year. Yeah, I wouldn't vote her for horse of the year. I think it's pretty. Uh, this is a pretty obvious statement, but I think if fierceness somebody like that won the uh, classic, they would be the year. Obviously, Doorknock, fierceness. Oh, okay. Even though I don't think Doorknock has a chance, I think it'd be undoubtedly it would be one of those. So even if she won the Cotillion and the Distaff, she's not going to win it over one of those if they won. No, not – I mean, that she won the Travers, absolutely, but she didn't. So, um, yeah, yeah, we're some – That was her – you know what, and, though? I didn't I didn't love her, but she did run an unbelievable race. I was a little against her, but she was – She was, it was good. It was – it was. Oh. It kind of brought racing – I feel like racing kind of needed that. It was kind of – Yeah, it, it, was a, it was a boost. And, yeah, I mean, she won a winning race. Like, that was a race good enough to win some years, but – fierceness just was better um that takes nothing away from her i mean it was comfortably back to third like she was Come, you know what's funny if you go back and watch the replay turn for home sierra leone was right about she was basically next to her like they were right. basically only half a length apart and she just ran away from him so it's not yep. like she had some sierra leone had some big excuse i mean he was he was closer and he was right next to her and the top two just ran away yep now uh She's the only one of the top four running running back before the Breeders' Cup, so we it's a do little get brave, to see her again. Is that a little What's brave that? to run? I mean, he knows his horse better, but you think it's going to be a tough ask a month later after a 10 for a long race like that? I mean, I guess she'll be running against horses like Candied, who she's already handled pretty easily. Right. So, yeah, she probably I mean, won't the, even have to be. The, the money is certainly significant, so... You know, there's that. What if she would have uh, ran in the spinster, beat Idiomatic, and then won the distaff? Would you be more? I actually thought she would run in the spinster, to be honest. I thought she was going there. I, I don't I don't vote. Uh, horse of the year, you need to be an open division. If you're, if you're a three-year-old, beating males is fine against other three-year-olds. Um, like, I don't think she needs to be older males to be horse of the year. But... She took her shot, and there was a horse better. Like I don't. Yeah, it was nice to see fierceness to me, do back to back. I, I get, I get why others. You know that she's a name and had a great year. Like I get it, but that's just not my style. It was nice to see fierceness go back to back too. Right? Can you go but, back to back to back though? Well, when you get a three month break, two and a half month break, I don't know if you call that back to back to it. Yeah, he's going to be. I mean, Delmar is better for him than some others. Way, so. way better for him. And he's already shipped west and won. I mean, that, yeah. there's a lot to like. He's a horse that doesn't really get respect either. He was seven to two in that race, three to one. And he just, I don't, I don't know. It was bizarre. Yeah, that, I, I mean, you know, and I picked Sierra Leone because I thought he'd be seven to two. And yeah, I was going to say eight to one. five. You never pick him. And, you know, then everyone after the rate and I mean, obviously someone bet him because he was eight to five. It wasn't me. Like I saw that those prices going to the gate. I couldn't bet Sierra Leone at eight to five. No, I I actually thought going to the race to Philly was going to be the favorite just because of her reputation. But the right. bet, well, I, the I definitely thought she'd be the early favorite because I figure people who just bet the Philly because she's a Philly. They don't need to wait for five minutes to post. They're going to bet her. So when when the opening odds came out and Sierra Leone at that time was, what, three to two? That surprised me. 
You know, he, yeah, fierceness of the seven to one for a long time. Right. So, and there's another Noah three. Foley said he was going to make a big bet. I'm sure he did. Uh, oh. Prez, uh, Portnoy made a big bet. Oh, yeah. That's because Mike Rapoli said he would pay him back if the horse lost and he was above three or below three to one. Oh. Something like that. It was on Pretty the good live offer. feed. Yeah. It was on the live feed. Some have paying back. You know, there's another three-year-old, too, not in the classic, but Raging Torrent's very good, too. Beat the Chosen Braun, the horse yeah. that won the race after Oaks or Derby. I can't remember which day it was, but the sprint, he's a very, very good three-year-old. So, Breeders' Cup looks good this year. Yeah, I'm excited. Philly Mare Sprint, it looks good. Everything looks good. You going out there? No, I can't. I can't make it this year. I went last year. I've been to Del Mar for Breeders' Cup once, but I'll probably skip this year and go next year. And then hopefully Belmont gets it in three years or two years, whatever it is, and we can go to Belmont in a couple years. I never well, went to the old Belmont. All about it. About Del Mar? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean the Breeders' Cup. You've been to Del Mar. No, I've been to the Breeders' Cup at Del Mar too. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to Del Mar a lot. It's um it's it's nice. There's an ocean on the round back, if you didn't know. Right. Yeah. There's <laughs> an ocean out there. Yeah. The Brigadier's a good restaurant. Tides in your uh paddock prints sheet? No. No. I no just I, Yeah, I don't do that. I just try to pick the horse that I think to the best. I don't really do the tides. <laughs> Well, I'm glad our small talk managed to not glitch. Yeah, it's funny how the things that how that stuff works out. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, what closing do we got weekend next in week? Saratoga. Uh, I guess we'll wrap up the spa. Got closing week at Saratoga, opening week at Kentucky Downs, where it's apparently going to be 198. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see how they race Thursday, but we'll see. What is the, what is the rule? What is the heat index rule? I tried to find it exactly. What I found was the temperature plus humidity can't be over 160 degrees, but I'm not sure that that ties as a rule. That might be a like state by state regulation, but I, I mean, if it's 95, I mean, the heat index is going to be over 100. I, I can't imagine they run. I guess they could push the cart back, but they don't have lights. So I don't know. I, I guess they would have to really right. push it. You know? Yeah. I mean, they push it forward too. Yeah. They could morning. go like 9 a.m., you know? It is good racing, though. I'll give them that. It's oof, it's hard, but it's fun. Good competitive racing. We will have picks. Well, I have 14 sheets this week. I counted. Wow. Six at Del Mar, five at. Or six at Saratoga, five at Del Mar, and then three Kentucky Downs races, tra uh, track or racing days. This what do they run Thursday, Saturday, Sunday? No, I think it's yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't run Labor Day. The first is Sunday. Right. Yeah, yeah. They run Sunday. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, right, Labor Day. Dang. Yeah, that's yeah, Labor Day. Everybody runs Labor Day. Well, Del Mar and Saratoga do. Right. So. All right. Well, thanks for the dish. <laughs>